Brennan. I teach reading and social studies. I'm Jessica Drawley. I teach math and science. So welcome to curriculum night. Um, we first wanted to start off uh, talking about project-based learning. This whole school is obviously based on project-based learning. And um, we both were lucky enough to go to Project Zero at Harvard this summer. And one of their projects is called the Out of Eden Learn. And we've decided to adapt it here for our students. The difference with this project-based learning is that it is going to be a year-long PBL, and it's not going to be quarterly. Um, the students will have something due every two weeks, but um, it won't have a end-of-quarter mass product. This is because this year we want to focus on progress over product. Last year it felt like the students um, got more out of our weekly challenges, and at the end, it was just they threw everything together and you couldn't really see their learning through their progress. We could see it through their challenges. So that's what we're hoping to achieve with Out of Eden Learn. So I'm gonna go ahead and play a video for you guys so you can have a better understanding. Is that what you guys are thinking? <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so it's really exciting. Uh, we really hope that students are going to enjoy it. Um, again, it's just to get them thinking on a global scale, uh, using technology in a way, but also incorporating that slow looking and looking around them. It allows them to, the challenge or the footsteps is really like a challenge. So it's a question or a statement that's posed to them to allow them to slow down and reflect on not only what was said and the actual words, but find a deeper meaning and how it relates to them. And then they're able to connect globally with other students, not just random people um, from other classrooms. Yes. And they're all able to comment on each other's posts. And some of them, for one example, is they create a map of their community. And one student will post it, and then our students can respond. We're going to try not to let them to respond unless to there's no other. one else like active in the walking party because you know you're going to want that feedback after you're getting it. Um, so we'll set this kind of guideline. Uh, some of the projects will be done at home. Uh, actually, most all of them will be done at home. There's a portion that will be done here in class, so we'll probably read Paul Philippe's, um a little blog post or journal article uh, about what goes along with the challenge and talk about it in class and discuss it on, on a global scale and then assign the challenge and then that should be done at home and then come back and we can look at everyone's responses and then talk collabor or collaboratively. Um, also just as a safety precaution, uh, the students will not use their names. They will probably just use their initials and in, like MCCS AM. Uh, the initials are so we know but we want to still keep them Anonymous. safe. Even though it is a walking party and you have to, it's all ed educators, we still want to just take every precaution we can. Okay. okay, so the next on our list is um, curriculum. Yay, what you guys are here for, right? <laughs> so our curriculum for our friends that were here last year is it hasn't changed too much. Uh, we combine the fourth and fifth grade for reading and for math. Uh, we are, we did this at the uh, end of last year. We are going to split fourth and fifth grade for science and social studies. Uh, this is because, unfortunately, we have the fourth and fifth grade SOLs. Between the fourth and fifth grade, there are six SOLs. Um, we can't be like K1 or two, three where they can do kindergarten curriculum for a whole year and then switch and do first grade for a whole year um, because of that. So we hope you understand and can work with us uh, with that, but we do try to keep the vision as much as possible. Uh, this year our theme, our yearly theme is exploration, so you'll see that each quarter has something to do with exploring, which ties in perfectly with our PBL, thinking globally, exploring. Um, so do you want to talk about math? I'm not going to be. So when it comes to math, um, I teach math through guided math style. So we have a mini lesson. I introduce the topic on Monday, and then every day following, they have a mini lesson depending on what topic we're covering. <coughs> and after the 15 to 20 minute mini lesson, we break into small groups where they rotate through stations. Um, our goal is to have four stations a day. It doesn't always work out that way because some people get stuck on one thing versus the other, so we get through as much as we can and try to keep on task as far as completing the four stations a day, and then Friday is our catch-up day. Um, they have math fluency that we work with at your seat, which is an independent practice on a worksheet or some type of written work where they have to show the process of solving the problem step by step. They meet with the teacher to review the topic and we do an activity at the big round table with me with their whole small group. And then there's a hands-on enrichment piece where they're either using manipulative or doing something on a computer or building something, just depending on what we're covering. Um, math, I'll say more later. Go ahead. Okay, um, for reading, we will do spelling usually on Mondays. Um, and I'll have different spelling groups, so I will have to do a small group session with each group to um, go over their spelling pattern for the week. Uh, we, I actually, myself and uh, talking to Mrs. Browning, have decided that teaching a student a spelling pattern in a week and then testing it on that Friday is almost too short and they're not catching on. So we're going to be testing them every two weeks on the spelling patterns. 
high five. Thank you. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. We, you know, we noticed that with how far along they got in some of their spelling books, and then we would give, we'd give spelling inventories for like, how did you miss? Yeah. So, again, you know, lifelong learners. <laughs> so we're going to start doing that um, after this week. Uh, usually on Tuesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, or Wednesday, Thursday, we'll do centers, and my centers uh, vary, we can, uh, but there's always one consistent, and that is guided reading with me. Um, I usually do, like to do a technology center, a spelling center, a deer time. We will also start book clubs. Book clubs uh, will have usually four to five students in them, and each one will have a specific role. The roles will change each day, and the students will read their books, and they come and meet collaboratively, and then uh, perform their roles. Uh, we did it some last year, and they did really well with it. And then when we have uh, our guided reading, they usually come over and talk to me about what they've been reading. So it's really exciting. Every day, um, well, just about every day, they have a mustache question where they will write in their writing journals. Kids love mustaches. I'm not sure what's going on with them, but they love it. <laughs> so up here, I must ask you, and then I prompt them with some kind of question. And they usually get a paragraph. I my socks were like blown off um, the like beginning of this year yeah. because my students from last year came in and I gave them, I said, just write a paragraph. Can I write uh, more than a paragraph? Sure. Five paragraphs later, edited, rough draft, sloppy copy, like, and indented it was punctuation, capitalization, awesome. everything that you should pay attention to was there. Like, literally, she's like, what? I was, so I was like tears, so <laughs> proud that we made such progress, and they came in from the summer, yes. independently, just filling up their paper yes. from their webs and mapping their ideas to pulling their thoughts together to their introduction, having their body, so, and having an actual conclusion. It's so really so. This might seem a little tedious and old school, you know. Get out your writing journals, kids, but it really helps them. Um, on Fridays, I like to have free write Friday where they can do their own. Uh, sometimes during, I think it was last week, we had a write a fairy tale using your spelling words, which they like that. Um, and then to go off of the spelling, you get do extra dojo points if you can come up with a spelling word that fits in your pattern but isn't on your list this week. Um, so that's a quick assessment for me to see if they're getting it. And then for them, they think it's fun because it's a challenge. So that's pretty much how I run the reading. Um, there will be some days where it will, will be whole group instruction just because it will be something fun or something whimsical. Uh, for example, last year we did a uh, interpretation of a song, Little Talks by of Mouse and Men, which was a song pretty popular a few years ago. And it's really neat to see the kids. They'll start off and they'll say, oh, that song is about a boy and a girl breaking up. By the end, they're like, this is a girl crying for help because she's just so upset, or and this is a ghost in a house, or this is about a man who's about to die, and they're really old, but they're, she's saying it's okay. Like, and even if you think that your child is not one to interpret, the ones who dug the deepest last year, and I am not an interpretive person, I am math, science, like matter of fact, the reality <laughs> is get it done, let's move on. And Katie is very much into that, she's like, tell me more, and they're like, so <laughs> passionate. Just, but I'm telling you, and then they come to science, and we listen to this song, and I'm like, okay, and I'm like, <laughs> listen, and I'm like, how'd you get that out of that? And they just kept going, and then days later, while well, I was thinking about this, and after I talked to my mom, or I talked to my brother, then I came up with this, and it really means, and I was like, go tell this brother, no, <laughs> she's gonna be so proud, but they're literally the kids, like, the one who's saving the book, doesn't say anything, pulling teeth to just get an answer to a simple question that is like a black or white kind of answer, and he just runs with it, and we're like, whoa, this is nuts. So it's really exciting. So we try to keep those structures, but some days it may not be like that. So if your student comes home and says, oh no, we didn't do sinners today, but instead we just had a discussion the entire time, I promise there was some reasoning behind it. <laughs> and there's like a... Along with our out of Eden walk and Paul Saul effect and progress over product, the slow looking, thinking about what gets you to your final point versus just your final point or what your goal is, how do you get there, and what can you pull and interconnect or relate to other parts of the world or your life is really 
something that after we attended Project Zero this summer is we're digging through. Like, we're going to go for it. Even I had an eye opener this summer and then we go on class. So I was like, oh, I'm guilty. <laughs> I gotta slow down. Yes. So um, that is basically it for reading. Uh, social studies will uh, go in chronological order. Uh, there will be some fun things. Uh, we try to do a lot of field trips based on social studies or um, science. Last year we did get to do a language arts field trip to Minnesota, which was amazing. Um, this year we are going, well, today we went to the library and I'm a really bad teacher and didn't take any pictures. So sorry about that, but hopefully there'll be more library trips. Um, we are going to the Frontier Museum in Stanton, Virginia in September. So look out for those um, field trip permission slips. We have lots of field trips that we want to do. Um, and because of that, we have yet to plan them. But Just we to wanted, price things out. Yes, with pricing. We were hoping and we haven't had any negative feedback yet, so we just wanted, you guys are the ones that we would hear from, yeah. right? Um, that it would be okay if we charge for some of our field trips, just so the students could go on more. Huh. Um, so for the Stanton one, it's going to be an extended day. So we leave at eight, they come back at 5.15 and it would cost $20. So that cost of the bus, bus and um, the okay. Frontier Museum. Cool thing about the Frontier Museum is, is that we are learning uh, Virginia SOLs, Virginia Studies SOLs, and Science SOLs for fourth and fifth grade. And there's a full cool STEAM component too. So our STEAM teacher is component. So it's really cool that we get to incorporate all three things. Yeah. It's really awesome how that worked out. Um, so that's it for our field trips. I uh, know. Um, homework. Homework. <laughs> we have, okay, so. I'm the nagging one that's daily. Um, math is assigned for moving math. It's an independently based program. So they take a pl placement test at the beginning. And from there, the child progresses at their own independent pace, based on how they score on the placement test and move forward. Therefore, um, yesterday I had a parent come to me who was struggling. It was all tears this week because the kid doesn't understand what they're doing. Well, last two weeks that they dug into Moby Max, they had their math tutor guiding them through how to complete every problem. So now the student is at a sixth grade math level and they're really at a fourth grade math level. So while it seems helpful to get them through with no tears, it's much preferred to slow down, work it out on paper and talk about the process of completing the problem step by step versus helping your kid achieve the highest score and move forward. Uh, so I had a discussion now with both sets of parents and all of my students on the importance because I don't want tears either direction. And if it's frustrating, then just shoot me an email or give me a call so that we can adjust accordingly. Um, but it is an independently paced program and 20 minutes a night is what research proves is a great reinforcer for the skills that have been and those that do move forward on an independent level are able to be exposed to the material that we will circle back to. However, I don't have a cap on <laughs> math, so I had kids leave yeah, last I year in math. fifth grade at the eighth grade math level, and they were doing well, quick learners in the classroom, but online, because it gives you an explanation if you get it wrong, once they saw the explanation, they were able to pick up their move forward. <coughs> So they're being exposed to what they're going to go into in middle school. So it's a good thing. Okay. And then for me, um, so uh, like Jessica said, homework is a reinforcer. It's not to be, or introduce new ideas. Um, although Moby Max does introduce some new ideas, that's just because your student has placed higher on it. So yay for them. Um, and we will come back around uh, and review those ideas. Um, I do 60 minutes a week. Moby Max. That is so the students can figure out what their time is like during the week. I know I have Taekwondo, I know I have dance, I know I have ballet, and it's really heavy towards the end of the week. So on Monday I'm going to come home and I'm going to do my whole hour. I also um, ask the students to do three spelling tests. You guys probably saw the spelling sheet that went home for it's on Class Dojo. 
the students get to pick from there three of those tasks. So it can be spelling, it could be, or it could be um, Morse code, it could be Braille, it could be writing the definitions. Um, I told the students this week because some of them chose the lengthier ones that they could do 10 words if they chose uh, write a story, um, write the definition, or write the um, uh, antonym. Uh, just because those are like very take more time. So that is just for them to get time management underneath their belt. They're going to go to middle school next year for some of them, two years for the others. And when they're in middle school, they're going to have A days and B days. And they're going to need to learn how to manage their homework. There's not going to have, or there's not going to be, you know, myself or Miss Jotty there to say, "Did you do this tonight? Did you do this tonight?" Um, so that's just kind of my way of doing that, and yeah, it's also I'm some kind of relief for the parents. Like, oh, what do you mean? I just took you to piano and then taekwondo, and now it's nine o'clock, and you still have homework, and you didn't do it, and yeah. So that is our our well, outlook on it. <laughs> you know, tell them if they don't have an activity after school, pull out your agenda and do it as soon as you get home, so that it's not an argument. And when they leave this school at the end of the day, we say, have a great evening and don't argue with your parents. Do something nice for them. Yeah. And lots of them laugh, and some of them come back and tell us what they did. And others tell us how they cried last night because they were yelling and screaming with mom because they didn't want to do their movie max. Or we get an email from a parent saying last night was a mega struggle. And so then we ask, why was last night a mega struggle? And they usually have like a little therapeutic session <laughs> and let it all out because we're not mom or dad. And then move on. So again, if you have any problems, shoot me a text. If you feel like it's too hard, we can actually bump them down to. Um, or if math is a big struggle and they're having anxiety over like the fact fluency going too fast or their mm -hmm. math problems under the math tab moving too fast, I can reset the timer to allow them extra time what it's set for now is a goal. So we're trying to foster the independence and fluency so that they can get through what they need to get through. Right, so that's <coughs> up homework. And then the last thing is we, um, another Harvard, Harvard Zero, <laughs> Harvard Project Zero thing we uh, took away was making learning visible. So with making learning visible, the students are actually held accountable for document, uh, documenting things that they see. Uh, they can take pictures, they can transcript uh, different conversations, they can video record, we can do it too. And it helps them to look back and see their progression. It's really important here at MCCS that we do that kind of learning because we don't give weekly quizzes or tests. We don't do um, worksheets all the time. You know, we have Progress them here and there. Right. But it's easier to do it through this so we can show. Especially when it's like November and you're, I know as a parent, I would be concerned, I'm not a parent, but if I was a parent, I would be concerned that I don't know how my kid is doing. I get, I got this report card and it has all these letters on it. What does this mean? So this is a way that we can help show you and also help show the student. Um, in a form of a <laughs> informal online portfolio. Yes. So we are um, still working with getting uh, Google Classroom set up. Um, it's looking like we're going to have to have the students make their own Google account right now because we are still under LCPS and LCPS is a contract with Microsoft. Um, and so they use OneNote. Um, so if you guys are okay with that, hopefully that works. Then the students can join Google Classroom through us. When they have their own Google account, they can set up a blog or their own website, and then they can upload their um, different uh, pictures and their learning. It's really <coughs> great. Now, here's my plug. Um, and some parents in the last class had a good idea, too. If you have any or know anybody with extra or old iPhones or iTouches that would, they wanted to donate, that would be great. Um, I know I think I have, like, an iPhone 3 still at my house somewhere yeah. floating around. <laughs> Um, that would be awesome. If your student has a device and you don't mind them bringing it, that would be okay too. So, it needs Wi-Fi connection. Yes, it needs Wi-Fi and, and, and a camera. So, other than that, what is that for? For making learning visible, so they can take pictures of what they're doing, and videos, document. Mm -hmm. document, and then create their own online portfolio, so their own blog. Yeah. Or 
cosmic block. I know, right? Another like boss. Crazy. Thing. You're like in my fourth grader having a block. But again, like Paul Full Effect, slow learning, but still adapting to our 21st century. Yeah. So, any questions? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have brochures for you, and then we also have a um, on the round table a conference sign-up sheet. Awesome.